Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for inviting us here. I have another person here, David Barnes, that uh, will also be doing some, uh, some interesting demos. I think any type of a show like this is a technology event. You need to see running code. So my white hair is one indication of many times it didn't work. But today it will work, I'm sure. Um, as Jenny talked about, I think there's some interesting things that we're doing around Web 2.0 and in particular around the idea of Web 2.0 goes to work. Um, this is an initiative we kicked off last year, and it wasn't Enterprise 2.0, it wasn't um, um, you know, in a certain collaboration space, and there's a reason for that. And part of the reason is, as we've seen, Web 2.0 means something different to everyone, and it should. It's very large and, and touches people in many different ways. So what I thought I'd do today in part of my presentation is take you through kind of what we're hearing from customers on the business value they think they're seeing around Web 2.0. In particular around this area of mashups, uh, open standards, and the way people can put together solutions for businesses like yourself very quickly. And, and why that's important, especially in the world as we're talking about, of lots of information being available. How do I make that work for me and not against me? So if we can uh, switch to the presentation, maybe, there we are. So I'll talk a little bit on Web 2.0, what we've learned from customers, a little bit of reshaping, we'll do a demo in here and, and some of our final thoughts. Um, um, Tim O'Reilly, when asked about a definition of Web 2.0, kind of said it's not just technology, it's really an intersection of economic changes we're seeing that the web's bringing us, social changes, the types of collaborations we're doing, and technology. So it's in the early days of Web 2.0, you get lots of different definitions, and I'll go through part of those of where we are. We think about it a little bit differently, too, from a technology standpoint. It covers a broad range of terms that people are using today from a technical standpoint. Many businesses are interested in these. When I've gone to talk to customers about wikis, for example, um, nice little forms, easy way for people to do forms and set up uh, teams. And many CIOs I talk to, I say, well, we're, you know, we're looking at wikis and we're using them in IBM and call it Wiki Central. And many CIOs would say, well, we don't use wikis. And uh, they turn to their directors and vice presidents and you know, be nodding, you all agree with me, and everybody would be nodding, no, 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 we already do do that. And, and you scratch your head for a second because as a CIO you want to know, I mean, it's your business to keep track of what the corporation's using. But it also started to give us insights into how people were being empowered, how they were finding ways to be very effective in their business. And so I'll go through a particular area of the kind of mashup space and how that is going to affect, uh, well, hopefully affect your businesses properly. Um, <clears throat> Web 1.0 was about, you know, connecting computers together. And if you think about Web 2.0, it is about connecting people. And it's just not the social aspect. Blogs have gotten a lot of traction in terms of people's opinions and especially in the political arena. IBM uses blogs. We use lots of blogs. We do that because we want our experts to be able to have a podium, if you will, to talk about advances in technology, talk about customer experiences. It enables us a way that you can find experts in IBM. And in a company with 330,000 people, trying to find one is hard. So some of these technologies are good. The interesting one is this idea that came out early in Web Tool called the long tail. And it, talked about the fact that the market is changing dynamically. You're seeing that instead of the you know, vendors dealing in dozens of markets of millions of users, we're seeing a flip where Web 2.0 lets us get to millions of markets of dozens of users. And when I started this talking about Web 2.0 and, and our team working on it almost four years ago now, we were very nervous that we would miss some of the enterprise value, that this wouldn't be something enterprises would be interested in. And we found just the opposite, that the more we talked about this idea, we found that there were lots of marketplaces that businesses wanted to connect with from a marketing standpoint, from product development, from business intelligence that they just couldn't afford to do before. 
So this gave us a good cornerstone for really thinking about how this evolved. And, and the areas we came up with from customers were these ideas, there are niche markets that you really want to be able to harvest information from and be, be part of a community. Um, one of the favorite examples is Harley Davidson. If any of you are Harley riders, you know how many little forums are out there about if you're a new rider and if you're a short rider like myself, um, how to modify shots, how to, you know, all sorts of areas that aren't the normal channels that a marketing organization in a, in a, a corporation could ever touch. Um, you know, web tool they look at is one way that they can look beyond just the normal techniques for doing that. It is about unlocking this information in ways that they can use for new business opportunities quickly. The keys quickly. This is about emergent business opportunities, and I'll talk more about that. Um, the instant business value point, and David Barnes with our demo will be able to show you some of that today. What is changing is back to my little wiki example. We're seeing businesses where the line of business folks are technical savvy enough to create their own solutions and drive their own business. And they're not afraid to do it. They can create blogs, they can create wikis, they can open up information and share it. And they're, you know, the risk of doing that versus the rewards from a business standpoint is much, much lower than it was before. Standardization, as, as you work through PCATs, this is a cornerstone. Without this type of standards around certain technologies, heavily XML-based types of things, we wouldn't be able to do the types of things we can do around Web 2.0 today. And it's almost a, a backbone. It's the, without those things, we couldn't do it. Um, so the tag cloud that everybody kind of sees and has seen for a while is this one that has all these terms on it. And early on in Web 2.0, um, businesses were coming to us and saying, we're, you know, we'd like to explore this some more. And as an emerging technology person, I gauge adoption. And I thought it was odd they were coming extremely early into this arena. And so I would turn it around and ask, well, what, what do you think is interesting here? Tell me, you know, what you find that might have business value on Web 2.0. And they came out and looking at all the different terms and really started to focus on the simplicity of Web 2.0. If I'm creating solutions, it's really content oriented, data driven, how I can use information effectively on the web to differentiate my business or, or, or use it to run my business. This idea of remixability, and there in particular is the idea that we have lots of information in our businesses, but usually it's stovepiped, and I have to get a programmer to be able to unlock it, to you know, use it with other information. And many CIOs would tell us that what they really wanted was this idea of remixability where it could be used and mixed with other content very quickly. And, and I'll give you some examples of that. Open APIs, ways that people can publish interfaces to their information. REST services are extremely popular inside enterprises today and growing. Um, very simple way that you can put a payload like an Atom feed in, or XML inside it. The idea of, you know, kind of the rich internet experience. I like the reach of the browser, but I also want a richer experience. I'm losing money from my website. Uh, e-commerce or e-business because it's just a little too clumsy. Is there ways I can improve on that? And the last one is interesting of user-generated content. As people looked at their businesses, many times they wanted to harvest the value of the community towards their product. Improvements to their products, you know, criticisms to their products, ways that they can make it much more of a collaboration and get closer to their customer.